Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this series we're creating Spider-Man in Unity 2D. We're going to make some enemies and attack them. Let's begin. Alright, so here's the scene so far. I have my Spider-Man character, I can move him around, and he plays attack animations. So I click and he attacks, first a punch, then a kick. You can also see some particles on the hit position, and the camera is following the character. Alright, so now with that, let's create an enemy. So over here in the code, I have the base enemy class. And as you can see, it is very similar to the base Spider-Man class. I have move animation, idle animation, test to see if it's playing the punch or kick animations, and I can play the punch or kick animation. Those are the same as on the Spider-Man base. And the only difference is in here we have a play hit animation. This is the animation that is meant to be played whenever the enemy is hit. So let's first make our enemy script in the same way we set up our Spider-Man script. So let's create a new c -sharp script and name it enemy. Inside this will be set up much like our Spider-Man class. So first let's go up here and make a private field for the enemy base. Enemy base. And we're going to grab it on the private void awake. So grab the enemy base equals game object dot get component of type enemy base. Okay. So we now have a reference to our base script. Now let's create the prefab that won't be used to spawn an enemy. So back into our editor. In here, let's duplicate the Spider-Man game object since the enemy won't have the same composition. We have a main game object, then we got the body, which contains the mesh that is used by the animation system, and a shadow, which is just a simple sprite. So the difference is in here, instead of using the Spider-Man material that contains the Spider-Man sprite sheet, let's use the enemy sprite sheet. And on the main game object, let's remove these two, add the enemy base, and then the enemy script. All right, so now we can go up here and create a new prefab. Let's name it PF enemy and drag the game object onto it. All right, so we now have our enemy prefab. Now let's run the game and see if our enemy shows up. So let's just move him in there and see. And yep, there he is, the enemy just standing around. Okay, so now first let's create a function to spawn the enemies. So let's go into our enemy class and up here, let's make a public static enemy create function. This will be responsible for instantiating a new enemy. In here, we're going to receive a vector three for the spawn position. And inside, let's instantiate the enemy prefab. Now, in order to do that, we need a reference to that prefab. So as a helper, let's go back into our code and make a new c -sharp script called game assets. This will essentially be our container for the references that we need. Let's make a new game object and name it game assets and drag the script onto it. So here on the game assets script, let's clean this up and we're going to have a public static game assets for our instance. Let's make a private void awake to set our instance equals this. And then we're going to have a bunch of public fields for everything that we need. So in this case, a public transform for the PF enemy. Okay. So now back in the editor, we can see that the script has a public field for our enemy prefab and we can now drag it onto there. Okay. So now we can go back to the enemy class and in here on the instantiate, we can go into the game assets dot instance and access the PF enemy prefab. All right, so let's spawn it on the spawn position and with quaternion.identity, okay? So this will be our enemy transform that is instantiated, okay? Now let's just grab a reference to the enemy script, which is on the enemy transform.get component of type enemy and then return the enemy script. All right, so we now have a function to spawn enemies. In order to test it, let's go into the game handler. And in here, let's spawn a bunch of enemies. So we're going to do it on private void start, which happens after all of the awakes. All right, now in order to spawn a bunch of enemies, let's use the function periodic, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. So in here, let's create a function that won't be triggered every, let's say, two seconds. So the function that won't be triggered will execute the enemy.create and let's create them in a random position around Spider-Man. So get the Spider-Man dot get position plus a utils class dot get random deer. So we get a random direction and multiply it by let's say ADF. Okay. So every two seconds, a enemy will be created on a random position within 80 units of Spider-Man. So let's see that. 
And yep, there you go. That one was spawn. Now that one was spawn. And as you can see, we are now correctly spawning enemies in their correct position. All right, so now that we have our enemies being spawned, let's make them attackable. So on the enemy script, in here we need a function for the enemy to get hit. So let's make a public void, call it damage. And in here, we're going to receive a vector three for the attacker position. Now in this function, we're going to play the hit animation. So first let's calculate the vector three of the deer to attacker, which will be the attacker position minus our position. So let's make down here a public vector three, just a helper function called get position and it will return our transform dot position. Okay. So to calculate the direction, it's the attacker position minus this position dot normalize. All right, so we now have the direction and using that direction, we can now play the animation. So we go into the enemy base and play the hit animation towards the direction to attacker. And when it is complete, let's go back to play the enemy base dot play the idle animation. All right, so when we call this function, we calculate the direction towards the attacker. We use that direction to play the correct animation and when the animation is complete we go back to idle so let's see if that is correct so to test it let's go into the game handler and in here instead of creating one every second let's just create one for easy testing so down here let's do an enemy dot create we're going to spawn him let's say on the right side so on 30 zero grab that enemy reference and now let's make a function periodic that will trigger the enemy dot damage from the spider-man dot get position and trigger that damage every second all right so in here we are spawning a new enemy on the right side then we are creating a function that will trigger every second every second it will damage the enemy using the spider-man as the attacker position so he should be playing the hit animation every second towards spider-man let's see if that is behaving correctly there he is, and yep, as you can see, he is correctly playing the hit animation. And if I move him around, you can see that the direction is being correctly calculated. All right, so now let's make Spider-Man be the one to actually cause damage. Let's go first into Game Handler and comment out this code, but leave the enemy as being spawned. Now let's go into the Spider-Man script. Let's go down into the handle attack function. And in here, after we click on the left mouse button, Let's first define a vector three attack position. And by default, this will be the get mouse world position. All right. Now in here, we want to check if there's an enemy nearby this attack position. So in order to do that, we are going to ask the enemy class. So we are going to have an enemy for the enemy that is nearby that position. And we're going to ask the enemy class to get the closest enemy. So let's go into the script and make that function. So up here, let's make a public static enemy get closest enemy. We're going to receive a vector three for the position and a float for the max range. Now, in order to look for the closest enemy, first we need a list of enemies. So we need to create a private static list of enemy for our enemy list. And on awake, let's simply add this enemy to the enemy list all right good so now we can go in here on the get closest enemy first define a variable for the closest enemy and set it to null and this is what we're going to return so in here we're going to do a for each and cycle through every enemy in the enemy list in here the first thing we're going to do is check if the enemy is within the valid range so if the vector 3 dot distance between the position and the enemy dot get position if the distance between these two is less than or equal to the max range, then this is a valid enemy. If so, then we check if the closest equals null, then that means we don't have defined a closest enemy yet. So we set this one closest equals this enemy. All right. If not, if we already have a closest enemy, then we want to calculate which one is actually the closest. So we do an if vector three dot distance between the position and this enemy dot get position. If this one is closer than the vector three dot distance between the position and the closest dot get position. So if this enemy is closer than the previous closest, then we set the closest to be this enemy. All right. 
That's a very simple script for calculating the closest enemy. So with this function set up and correctly returning the closest enemy to a certain position, we can now go back into our Spider-Man script. And in here, we can grab the closest enemy. We give it our position and a max range of, let's say, 20F. And then we check if enemy is not null, then that means there is an enemy within range that we can attack. So instead of setting the attack position to the mouseworm position, let's set the attack position to be the actual enemy.get position. And we can actually do enemy.damage and damage the enemy and give it the attacker position, which is this position right here. And when calculating the attack direction, instead of using the mouse position, use the attack position. All right. So first, by default, we set the attack position to be the mouse world position. Then we check if there is an enemy near our position. If there is an enemy, then we set the attack position to be that enemy position, and we damage the enemy using our position. All right, so let's test, and we should be able to attack the enemy. All right, so here's Spider-Man, there's the enemy, and if I go in here and I attack out here, you can see nothing happens. The attacks are perfectly normal, heading towards the mouse, okay? And now if I go near the enemy and I attack, Yep, there you go. He was damaged. He played the damage animation. So now for testing, let's spawn another enemy. So we now should have two enemies. So let's see. And now if I go in the middle of both of them, he won't choose one and attack that one. Now this, as you can see, is not necessarily ideal. We want to give a priority to the enemy that is closer to the mouse position, not just the generic Spider-Man position. So let's do that. So in here on the Spider-Man, instead of looking for the closest to this position, let's do for the closest to the mouse position. So now here I am, I go into the middle of both of these enemies, and if I click on this side, yep, I'll lock onto that enemy and I hit him. And if I click on this one, yep, you'll lock onto that one and you hit that one. So I can now easily switch targets and hit one, hit the other one. So there you have it. We created some enemies, made a function to spawn them, and attacked the closest one using our Spider-Man. In the next video, we're going to set up enemy health so we can actually kill them. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.